Hello and welcome to part two of the Life Hacker Night School series on how to make a website or how to make a web page. Uh, yesterday's lesson, we taught you how to uh, learn a little bit about the basics of HTML, about page elements, um, and how the flow of an HTML document works. Today, we're actually going to talk about styling and CSS. And styling is basically what defines the way that your website looks. Uh, it defines the weight of the font, the type of font, the the positioning of elements on the page, uh, the color. Um, it's basically everything that defines the way your website looks. You can define style in three different ways within your document. Adam showed a little bit yesterday on this note. Uh, so, for example, you can do it you can show styles as inline styles. So say we've got this paragraph uh, element here. You can define a style by saying style equals, use the style attribute, and then do something like color red. Uh, and this is just the uh, this is just the syntax for how you define any CSS. Uh, it's a uh, it's the attribute, which in this case is color, and that defines um, text color and red which is obviously the color uh, you can use a lot of basic color names but in general you'll probably when you want finer grain control going to be using like hex values and whatnot for the colors okay so if i save this and go to my page and refresh it you can see that all that text has turned red um, and i can do a lot of different things uh, within the the styling to to change the way that the website looks um, so that's the first way, that's a very easy way that you can do styling in um, using CSS. But you can also, it gets a little clunky, say I want all my paragraphs within a page to look the same way. Uh, I would have to use that P tag, for example, on many different ones. Uh, and that's why, as Adam sort of touched on earlier, you want to start naming things with classes or IDs. In this case, let's say I want all the text of my um, paragraphs to be to be red so I would say uh, class equals red and then I could define an element uh, that is a CSS class and make it so that the color for all paragraphs with the class red are going to be red um, doing this in line is a little bit clunky so the better way to do it is actually either using a an internal uh, style sheet and inter internal CSS uh, often up in the head of the document or an external style sheet. So to start off, let's put this in the head of the document. So it's going to look something like this. You're going to want the style tags. Um, it's style and then you say type equals text slash CSS. And then you have the closing tag. It's the same way as any element in HTML because it is a, it's an element within the HTML. So you've got the opening tag, the closing tag, and then this type CSS attribute here. And now what you can do is you can define any CSS inside of here and have it applied to those various elements. So in this example, I want this class red that's going to have everything um, with red as the class show up as red in the document. Um, so for example, um, I could just do this. And as you can see, if I reload, it's still red. Let's say if I wanted red to actually be green, change that, reload, and now it's green. So pretty simple stuff. Um, one thing to keep in mind though is say I wanted all my paragraphs regardless of class or ID to be to be green, for example. Um, so what I could do is I could change this to P and you can do this for any HTML element. You define specifically the tag type within CSS. So this is P. So this will apply to all things with P, whether or not it has a class or an ID, um, as long as it doesn't have some other conflicting style uh, set on it. And if I reload this page, you can still see it's there. So just to show that it actually worked, um, let's say I want all my P's to be blue. So I refresh that, my P is blue. <laughs> yeah, okay, so um, that is how you can do inline style sheets. Um, this is all right, but it also gets a little bit clunky. Even better is you can define an external style sheet. Um, 
which basically lets you take all of the style information that you want and put it into one specific file and then link to that file from the head of your document uh, and and then you can define all your styles within that and here's how that works uh, so basically you use this link attribute and you define uh, the path to it with this href if you've used uh, the anchor tag before you're familiar with that and this is just pointing to the directory where the style sheet is located in this case I've created one here uh, here's the the folder that's holding my lesson 2.html file which is the one we're using right here and then I've got this style sheets folder and in it I have style.css so I'm gonna open that in here which I can do thusly and so say I took and I pasted uh, text of this into that style sheet and now we want it to be yellow just to see that it's changing and there we go it's yellow it's tough to see because yellow on white looks awful um, so there we go um, so as you can see, uh, those three different ways basically allow you to, three different avenues for styling things. Uh, when you do the inline styling, um, it's going to be best for things that are um, just sort of one-off things. Uh, it's generally not the best way to do it. Um, but yeah, if I wanted this paragraph tag to be different, um, I could say uh, color is um, pink. Think that works and that's pink even though and so that will override my my paragraph one in the CSS because it's it's specifically on the element it's sort of the closer you get to the element most of the time uh, the 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 priority will be given to that one um, so so yeah that's the basic idea here so let's add an image to this um, document and sort of play around a little bit with the text inside and sort of positioning things, moving things around. So I've got this image of my dog in the image directory here. Um, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use my text expansion here, but it's image source equals the name of uh, the path to the file. And then I've got this paragraph below it. I'm gonna add some lorem text here just to fill it out a little bit okay and I'm gonna just change it to buddies page okay so if I refresh this as you can see I've still got this oh, I changed the title but I didn't change the h1 this also will be buddies page okay so I've got buddies page here some text picture of buddy uh, looking like a gremlin and so let's let's start styling this a little bit. Um, give you a little idea. So in this case, let's call this image. Um, let's give it an ID of Budman. Um, and and the one thing you want to keep in mind with IDs versus classes is basically a class is sort of a general container um, or a general uh, term where. Uh, if, for example, I, ha I wanted anything with uh, the class of red to be the color red or have a background color of red, I would use class for that because it's going to be applied to many different elements. If it's just going to be applied to one element, that's what IDs are for. You only use one, IDs unique to each element. There shouldn't be more than one, for example, Budman ID on any page. It should only apply to this one thing. Um, I showed this briefly earlier, but um, classes in CSS look like this, which is uh, they have the dot and then the class name. IDs look like this. They've got uh, the hash and, and then the name of the ID name. Um, and when you're, defi when you're defining styles within a style sheet, you use the curly braces to open and close each style. So you can put a lot of different um, you can put a lot of different styles within this uh, within this paragraph defined style, and uh, and they will all apply. So I could also say like font size is 14 pixels, and as you can see, there it's applied. Um, so there we go. So we've got our page. Uh, let's say that instead of 
this, which is, you know, a little ugly with you've got this image and a bunch of white space over here and then the text below. Let's say we want to put the picture of Buddy over on the right somewhere and then we want the text to be on the left of it. So to do that, um, let's do a little custom styling. Um, for starters, in our document, let's create, okay, so we've got this header one div, that's, which should actually, will close because it seemed to imply that the header is applying only to Buddy's page. Um, let's create a sec second div to contain this stuff below. Um, we'll call it container, and uh, here's the opening of it, and it's still closed down here. Um, so let's create this container ID. And let's say that we want it to be um, 800 pixels wide. So we'd say width equals, I'm sorry, width 800 pixels. Okay, and just to give us an idea that it's actually um, there as a, as a container with a specific width, let's, let's give it a background color um, of DDD, which is gonna be like a light gray. Okay, so there we go. We've got this 800 pixel wide. Let's just measure. Container, yep, 800 pixels. And we've got uh, the image in it, and we've got the text in it, and as you can see, this different header one div is still on its own. It's, it's, it's outside of this text, so it doesn't have the gray black background. So, um, now we want Buddy to float over here to the right. And to do that, we use a CSS uh, attribute which is called uh, float. And we want it to float to the right. So we say float right, and this is on the Budman element. And remember, we could do this in many ways. Uh, it could be class, it could be an image class. I could do it so that every image floats to the right. Um, I could uh, do it inline here with uh, my Budman embed, and I could say style equals float right. Um, I could do it anywhere, um, but for this uh, sake of, of this demonstration, we'll, we'll put it in the external style sheet, which in general is where you're going to want to put most of your style. Um, so let's refresh the page, and now we've got Buddy's image floating over here to the right. Um, not bad. You'll notice that uh, it, the, the, the div doesn't quite uh, catch how, how long Buddy's image is. I can fix that by just putting height equals uh, 500 pixels. Uh, and then when you refresh it, uh, you should get this, which basically uh, tells the div how, how wide or how tall Buddy is and then uh, doesn't cut it off, uh, because, which can sometimes happen during a float. So let's say we also want our container to be um, 600 pixels, uh, and that will define the div as, by default, being 800 pixels by 600 pixels. Uh, it, it ends here, and that's sort of the long and short of it. Okay, so um, let's now style a little bit of this text in here. So, you know, for example, we don't want to have the text bumping right up against the image. Uh, so we want to maybe put a margin there or, or a padding. And, and margin and padding uh, define sort of the space between elements. Um, margin is the space outside of an element, um, and the padding is the space inside of an element. So this image gives you a little bit of an idea of what the difference between margins and paddings look like uh, in practice. But essentially, it's, it's how you create sort of space between things. For example, with my paragraphs, if I were to say padding equals 10 pixels, it's gonna put 10 pixels all around the inside of the um, paragraph tag. Um, and I wanna get a little bit more space here around the edge of all of my images, so to do that, um, I'll make it so it's for all of my images. So I'll say image, and then I'll say margin. And, and in this case, it's, it's really only con important um, on the side here and on the bottom. Uh, but, but just to start out, let's say we want a margin of 10 pixels as well. So I do that, and you see that it floats it from the edge of this. Uh, it pushes it from the edge. From the bottom would, would have some padding. Actually, let's add a little lorem text so that it wraps around. Okay, uh, 
it'll add a little bit uh, padding to the bottom here uh, or margin to the bottom here as well um, so the text isn't right up against it um, but let's say for example I actually want the image to be on the edges here but to keep some sort of padding here um, or margin there what you can do is you can define the margin as um, this is how to comment, comment things out. You can define it as margin left uh, 10 pixels, uh, margin bottom 10 pixels, and then if I refresh it, it'll keep those margins uh, at the left and at the bottom, but it will remove it from the sides uh, that I didn't define. Um, you can actually do this in a shorthand by saying margin, let's see, 0, 10 pixels, 10 pixels 0. Um, basically what this is is each one starting from the top so it's 0 at the top, 10 at the right, 10 at the bottom, and 0 at the right. Um, when you're starting out this is a lot easier just to say margin left, margin bottom, whatever. Um, so yeah we've got Buddy's page here as you can see this text has overflown. Let's say I want that text not to overflow my div um, I can put something like that in it. Uh, overflow equals overflow set to scroll. Uh, you can also say uh, specifically, um, let's see, what is it? Overflow auto. Um, it will only show the scroll bars if it's overflowing in that direction. So uh, you'll notice if it was set to scroll, it shows the horizontal scroll bar as well as this vertical one. Um, that's kind of ugly so auto is nicer it'll get rid of it and, and it won't show anything unless there's something actually overflowing in the direction now it's a little bit beyond the scope of our lesson here to really go into um, all of the different all of the different things you can do with CSS um, in the text of the post I'm gonna have several uh, links for for resources for looking up different uh, CSS attributes that you can you can assign to uh, your elements but the key thing to take away is that uh, using using CSS and linking it to different elements in your page, you basically you've got a pretty unlimited uh, number of options for for sort of styling things exactly how you want. And this is obviously um, a somewhat ugly page I've created here. No offense to Budman. Uh, tomorrow, Adam is going to be showing you how to take a Photoshop mockup or a website mockup in general and sort of start translating those things into your actual web page and how so you can have a little bit uh, more more foresight a little bit more forethought with what you're going with and have something maybe a little more attractive than the page we've got here so stay tuned tomorrow and uh, we'll be showing you how to translate your beautiful design idea to an actual web page <laughs>